Okay, thank you all. Um, it's 10.30, so we will um, bring to order the um, Economic Development Committee meeting on um, Thursday the 29th of June. Um, there is no public forum, so we'll move straight into apologies. Um, that the committee accepts apologies from Councillor Jim O'Malley, Councillor Marie Lafiso, and Councillor Lee Vandivis. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Walker, thank you. I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against? Thank you. Passed. <laughs> Confirmation of agenda. Um, I move that the committee confirms the agenda without um, additional alteration. Uh, is there a seconder? <coughs> Councillor Barker. I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against? Passed. Thank you. Item 5, declarations of interest. Uh, are there any updates? No, all good. Uh, so I move that the committee notes amends, if necessary, the elected members of interest and register. Um, confirm amends the proposed management plan for elected members' interests. Is there a seconder? Councillor Gary. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you. Item 5, Part A reports. Uh, the Odipodi Destination, Dunedin Destination Management Plan 2023. Uh, Mr. John Christie and Ms. Louise Vanderveld please, um, will speak to the reports. Uh, morning, councillors. So just um, before we start uh, with questions, just would like to reiterate that this document you have before you has not been graphically designed and does not include any pictures that um, we would hope to have in a final document. Uh, that work is underway and we'll obviously be including that in the final draft. Uh, happy to take questions, Mr Chairman. Um, thank you. Questions? <coughs> Councillor Gilbert. Uh, thank you. Mine, and I'm fully aware that this has been a very long process, of, and to be where we are is is quite remarkable. Um, and much of this is awesome, as as I think I've said in the past. Uh, there are a couple of things. Just want to clarify. First of all, where to from here? Because this is the final draft. So between now and it, if you like, going live, what what's happening? Uh, we'll take any feedback from councillors today. There will be a, f a final edited version that will just be made public. So the next steps will be that we will take any minor edits um, at the discretion of the Chief Executive. Obviously, it's included in the recommendations, but the document will then be finalised. Okie dokie. Uh, in reading through it, and, and I think I've raised this in the past. If I haven't, I apologise for raising it now. Um, just reading through it, the word cafe doesn't appear, restaurant doesn't appear, hospitality doesn't appear, food, as it turns out, only appears six times. Uh, and of that, one of them is rounding out that the top six uh, experiences in the region are heritage and food and drink experiences. I'm just wondering why when we're talking about a destination and everything that goes on in the tourism aspect of things, people don't just come to, to putting it quickly and crassly ride boats and buses, um, they come to go out to restaurants, they come to all that sort of stuff, so surely that would be part of the destination plan and is that going to be inserted even just by way of photos? I look, uh, certainly will be by the images that we use, councillor. It's hard to get the wording in for all sectors in terms of uh, a plan in itself, so uh, we would like to capture that in the way we use the images. Um, and the last one is, and on very much the same lines, uh, heritage. Uh, it is pointed out in here um, five times, in fact, just how important um, our heritage is as a point of difference. But really, the, there is only the one reference to moving forward how to capture that, and it's uh, 2.6 developer experiences for visitors to engage with our natural, cultural and environmental heritage in ways that resonate most with them. And again, I'm assuming that's going to be picked up in other ways through the final plan? Uh, yes, it will, Councillor, and look, we're very aware of the importance of the heritage to the value of Dunedin in terms of um, the destination plan um, and in food and beverage sector, and we'd look to carry that through to some of the actions in the action plan. 
Okay, on my list for questions, I've got Councillor Gary next, Lucas and Walker. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr Chair. Um, in the Bringing It Together section on page 35, um, there is ranking of um, concepts for supporting visitor experience. And I was just interested to hear a bit more about, and I was surprised that Arts and Culture came seventh in that, and wondered in terms of the feedback that you received in the discussions, um, why it was so low in the, in the ranking. I actually am not sure why it ranks so low. This was um, feedback that we got through the consultants doing um, their work with the community and I guess it's just the way that that ranked back from the feedback that we got as part of that process. So, um, okay, that, that's fine. Um, second question is around, I, I noticed in a number of places, and, and thank you, I know it's been a huge bit of work um, for all concerned. Um, I was very interested to see the mention many times, and I was heartened to see around the developing the workforce, um, and it was mentioned in a variety of ways. However, I didn't see any uh, comment on uh, detail of that, and in particular I'm thinking of things like living wage, and paying the living wage, or a plan to pay the living wage, um, acknowledging that the visitor sector has been hit very, very hard with COVID. Do you have any comments to make about that? And and also the, um, we want, it's a vicious cycle, isn't it? We want uh, excellent customer, um, customer service so that people increase their spend, stay longer, increase their spend, have a memorable experience, tell others about it. Um, but that relies on the workforce being able to deliver. And for me, the key elements are, you know, being paid, having job security, and because um, of the seasonality, and also professional development. So, any any comments about the discussions in coming to the arriving at this? Yes, thank you, Councillor. Um, you'll note in priority two two point two actually that we've got that identified as. A Can you give me the page? Sorry. Page 42, 42 under 2.2. So look, it has been identified and I think we're very aware of the need to build both the capacity and the capability in the visitor sector and uh, that will be a, a piece of work that will require some further thinking and, and scoping in terms of that, how that work will be undertaken and with which parties will undertake that work because I think uh, we agree with your um, vision that the sector should be able to raise um, to at least the, the living wage for those that are working within the sector. It's a desirable goal, I think, that we would like to capture. In the discussions, were there any, in the formation of the plan, were there, what, was there a re reflection on that? I mean, it talks about how hard it is to get staff and staff retention and all of those things. Was there discussion about that from the operators who were involved in the steering group? I'll look to some of my steering group colleagues to, to add to that, but I, I think it was touched on. I think we're very conscious of the need to ensure that the sector is able to um, employ staff that have the appropriate skill set and knowledge, um, but also are able to retain them. And look, it, it is a conversation I know that it has been had over many years, actually, in terms of seasonality as well as um, you know, making sure that we're paying um, a wage that retains people in those roles. So it will be a part of that ongoing work that we do, but um, I do look to my steering group colleagues for further comment. Um, I would endorse that, and I think actually summed that up quite well. And there was a number of other issues that were canvassed in a similar manner across the group at different forums that, um, uh, that also talk into um, key issues of the city, uh, factoring tourism, so yeah. And my final question for now, <laughs> um, really pleased to see international education in there um, as really important for the visitor industry and for destination. Um, in those discussions, uh, as we build that sector back up, was there acknowledgement of the draw card the students are in terms of bringing friends and family to the city as a, as a destination? Yes, look, I think it's a very valuable point to note that um, visitors 
across across um, multiple sectors, including education. And there's no doubt that education plays a significant role in terms of bringing long-term visitors in the in the students, uh, but also their friends and family that come often during orientation week, but also during other special occasions. So, you know, we're very conscious that the education sector really does play an important role and does feature in, in our thinking around the destination plan. Thank you. Councillor Lucas. Um, following on from Councillor um, Gary, and also from Councillor Gilbert, I mean, I had the same concerns over um, food and food and drink, and there's no reference really to all that work of Sarah Meikles in here, um, in Heritage, but also in education. I mean, the word education, I don't, I think might only be mentioned once in here. I think it's it's not obvious in here, I, um, and I, I hear your reply on that. Um, so just following on from that, but my other question is on page 48 in terms with first steps, I note your date for your setting up your steering group is by December 2023, but then you've got other actions, 1.2, 4.1 .1 4.2, 4 4.4 are all either November or December. I would have thought that you'd want your steering group in place before then if those actions are to be done by that same time. I'm just wondering whether those dates are correct. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. I think that's in reference to the strategic refresh that Council is going through in terms of any formal steering group structure. Um, there's every intention to carry our existing steering group forward to provide guidance and advice on, on the actions as we kick them off. And uh, we're not going to wait till December to get these plans underway. I can give you that assurance. Councillor Walker. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks uh, to the team. There's um, lots and lots about this I really, really like, actually. Uh, it's a great read. Um, first of all, though, if I can make a I'm going to request a suggestion if there is time to change stuff. It's on page 30 of, the, of our papers, 11 of the document, and you've used a number of quotes. And this quote, um, it talks about uh, proximity is a big positive to Eden with an exceptional harbour, wonderful and interesting hills, blah, blah, blah. Um, I just have a real problem with the adjective interesting. Um, and I think there must be much better words out there. I mean, incredible, alluring, beautiful, outstanding, compelling. I'm just, personally, I use the adjective interesting to describe something that's pretty rubbish. So that's my only observation. No, seriously, I just, I think, I think there's so, I don't think we have interesting hills. I think we have phenomenal, outstanding, wonderful. So I just, if, I'm sure there's a plethora of other quotes. So that's my suggestion. Um, you can ignore it if you want, um, the team that does that. Um, just a, a couple of questions. A lot of the paper talks to discussions with cruise ships, and that's really exciting to try and ask them or in, impel them or compel them to be to be good citizens when they when they sail in sail in through into our harbour. My question is, how much? And I ask this in, in, from a from what I've seen around the world. How much leverage will we actually have to be able to compel them to do anything? Yeah, look, it's it's a national issue, councillor. We, we're we very aware of the influence we have on that sector. I think there are some things that we can do locally that will have influence, and um, that's a, one of the immediate actions that you'll see in, in the work that we want to undertake. And um, in fact, Ms. Ms. Van de Villiard is also, um, as we currently speak, uh, looking at pulling together a group for revising the cruise action plan and the cruise strategy will we'll follow hard on that. Um, we think we can influence it at the national level, but obviously there's a lot of work to be done. Um, not being part of the steering group or any, any, any groups that make those decisions, I do, I do have some great ideas. So how would somebody like me feed those ideas through? Councillor, if you'd like to feed them through to us and um, we can keep you updated on that. Um, and we'll be doing quite a lot of consulting as well. We actually, as part of the DMP, have gathered a lot of good feedback on cruise, the, the community sentiment and the views, so we've got a lot to go, but maybe we could have a conversation. Thank you. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Um, and just third point, I agree with the previous, I think, three speakers. Um, as I read it, um, and I think my understanding is that heritage is the number one reason people come here. Um, it just, I just found that there wasn't, I didn't get that, 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 that sense that that was something key. So just a, a feedback. And also the food and drink as well. I think, um, I think the city's done well in, 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 in becoming um, 
an F and D centre, and I think it's going to get better and better. I think we should really leverage off of that. Which leads to my other Cam point. Councillor, yeah, the, the, the question, question is no, the question yeah. is coming. This is a good lead in. Um, so my question is, as we discussed in um, when we've done workshops, is how do we, and this is difficult, how do we ultimately get the essence in this um, of that uniqueness that is not describable but that is Dunedin? That's a really tough question. Yeah, look, I'm confident that we can do that through some of the imagery and graphic design that we put into the final document and, and I appreciate um, your comments around some of the wording changes that we can look uh, to incorporate, Councillor. Um, look, it's different Difficult to capture everything into a document, but as the old saying goes, uh, a picture tells a thousand words, and I'm hoping that we can reflect the essence of Dunedin and the way we design and the design the doc, final document and the and the use of the images. And final question, if you'll indulge me, Mr. Chair, and it is a question. Um, on page 44 of our documents, 25 of the of the of the um, of the plan. Um, it talks, and I think excitingly, about working with um, PFD, Yellowway Penguin Trust, New Zealand Sea Lion Trust, Dunedin Wildlife Hospital, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's exciting. How do, how do, and I know, I know at the top you say not limited to when you've got potential partners. How do those groups, who are really important, because those groups would be preferable to DOC, to be honest, how do they get involved? Yeah, so all of those are suggested partners, so there's room for including others, obviously. Um, we, we see each of these projects as needing to be scoped and for the appropriate parties to be approached in terms of the contribution that we'd want to have them make to any f any final outcomes that we would look for under those items. So um, this isn't going to be just led by DCC, this has to be community led in terms of the projects and we're really keen to ensure that we have good engagement with multiple players around some of these projects. Thank you, I thought of another question but I'll wait. Councillor Gilbert. Thank you, just coming back to uh, I think it was my first question, uh, but also ones that have been touched on. Uh, regarding the steering group, you mentioned that from here, this is ostensibly getting signed off, handed over to the chief, uh, and we're up and going? Correct. That sign-off is by the steering group? Um, no, the sign-off will be by you today with any minor edits uh, made by the chief, but we would obviously look to run that past the steering group to ensure it still fits with the essence of what we're trying to achieve. Lovely, and you're going to you mention about continuing to engage with the steering group to kind of roll things out? Yeah, that's correct. So coming back to my conversation about hospitality not really appearing in this, is there any facility for including hospitality, a hospitality representative on the steering group, obviously, as things progress? Uh, certainly, Councillor, we see that the steering group should be enhanced with some other sector representation, um, hospitality, education, um, potentially DOC, uh, but also the individual action that we will undertake will also have their own representation. So, for example, crews might contain quite a different group that wouldn't necessarily sit on the steering group, uh, but would be important in terms of driving um, the outcomes we're looking for. Councillor Gary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. On page 37, um, in the little grey box, there's a couple of points that I just wanted to ask for a little bit more exclamation, uh, ex explanation. Um, and it was great to see at the top of that list authentic, immersive, enlightening experiences, and then later on the opportunities to give back and contribute to a better future. Could you speak to um, any of the discussion around that in the steering group, particularly uh, yeah, the authentic and the giving back, because it's been my uh, experience for a long time that our, the visitors that come here now really do have uh, a belief that they want a, a strong sense and passion to give back in some way or other. Yeah, that again came through some of the work that the consultants would have done in terms of community engagement, but I think on reflection on your comments, there is certainly an awareness and understanding that our visitors have changed in terms of them wanting to have a more full experience when they visit a, a destination like of Dunedin, and they are very keen to contribute to initiatives that enhance and support the work that particular 
visitor um, visit operations might be undertaking. So I, I think there's been quite a shift in that direction. And again, it has sort of been touched on um, through the steering group, but I think we've got a really good awareness of the fact that our, our visitors are changing and they're not as they were. And I think there's a real desire for them to want to contribute to local communities. And can I just follow that up and ask um, Ms Van Ilya, just around the authentic aspect of experience, what, what is it you understand by that and, and what was the conversation in the steering group around that? So once again the authentic, this was community feedback and um, but authentic, so people don't want things that are contrived, they really want to feel they are getting out there and experiencing the real experience. Um, authentic, they don't, and that's where we're very strong with our natural environment and, and our wildlife. They actually want to be getting out, that's why they're visiting us and not going to see things in zoos and things like that. The cultural side of it, we do have a lack and they do want more of that as well. So, How did the steering group respond to those com that community feedback, did you think? The community feedback is what um, the steering group endorsed that we're all very aware of and that's something this the steering group have taken on board. It's um, yeah, it's looking at what we are and, and looking at what the community see and the different... So there was a feeling of wanting to grow that within the people who deliver um, at our attractions, there was a responsiveness to that desire? So um, for those that are on the steering group, yes, and those, some of those are delivering themselves, and this is something that we need to, we will be taking out further into the industry again, wider. Can I just add to Councillor that um, that authenticity also is matched with the work that we did around the food and beverage work, so um, people that are visiting the city really do want unique experiences in that as well, and, and our built heritage. Brilliant, thank you. Councillor Walker. Um, yeah, thank you again, uh, Mr Chair, and I very much agree with the previous comments. Um, two questions, a simple one first. In terms of the, the visuals, because visuals are a, a fantastically important part of, of marketing, um, will, will we get a chance to cite those again or, or not? Um, the, no. <laughs> um, there's not any intent to do that at this point in time. That's fine. And going to page um, um, 31, 12 of the document, sorry to keep saying both pages, um, and in terms of our wider strategic goals, and I understand this is coming before our strategic refresh is complete, and we're, gonna, we're working proudly in the context of a donuts economic thriving cities context, I'm chuffed to see mention of that in the pink box, the first two comments actually. Uh, you talk about thriving circular economy and working within ecological limits. Was there any reason why that, that those concepts weren't stitched through the document more, understanding that that's central to where we're going to be going with all of our strategies? Uh, look, at, um, we're certainly very aware of the work that's being undertaken through to the council's wider strategic refresh and so uh, that was well discussed actually by the steering group and it, it was a little bit of chicken and egg in that we wanted this document to be um, endorsed by council but also we're reflecting on the fact that we've got wider work being undertaken by council so we're very conscious of the need to to have a refresh of some of this once we've got that work completed um, and I think that's indicated that we will. This is a living document, and it will be something we'll incorporate into um, any refresh we do of this document. And probably a, a question to Louise. Um, just needs a yes or no answer. Um, would, for example, would, would an example of a um, a unique experience in Dunedin, for example, be a group of five or six people watching a yellow-eyed penguin being operated on at a wildlife hospital? Yes, it would be. Okay, thank you. Councillor Houlihan. Thank you. Um, on page, I think it was back on page 30, let's go back and double check, um, where it talks about our um, what's different about our city, and it says, um, where is it? Oh, sorry, on page, yes, 30. Um, Otipuru Dunedin is a visitor destination, and then it said what sets the city apart from other destinations in New Zealand is that these city experiences are embedded within a stunning built 
um, natural environment and are coupled with a range of outdoor and wildlife experiences that visitors might not expect to find on the edges of the city. And, and that is true. Um, however, reading on and further into the strategy, um, I haven't come to parts that are really highlighting and telling me that we're a university city. It de I know, you know, perhaps maybe you might think, oh, we've done that to death. But the truth is, it is one of our really big, unique selling points is that we're a university s city. Do you think it's sort of been missed a little bit in the strategy or do you feel we've, we've catered to that well? Uh, look, uh, um, I note, note your comments, Councillor. I think what we will look to do is uh, when we're developing our marketing strategy, um, we will be incorporating the importance of the university into into that, and so it will be covered as part of the actions from this document. Could I ask around that? My, I, I'm, and I've raised this before, but I'm a bit confused as to why our marketing strategy wasn't done first and then drove this, because once we've got key messages, that defines what the strategy and outline and objectives are, in my opinion. That's just, I mean, is that, would that not be useful for once we've got, you know, a marketing plan to say this is how we're going to market the city, and then the strategy from there comes along with key messages and objectives, and it make, gives you a very clear idea of what direction you're going in, because right now we aren't actually, it seems to me, my question is, um, what would you say our key messages are at the moment in here? Like what, you know, what are we targeting? So look, I think there's a, a really big difference between destination marketing and destination management. This document looks to address destination management. It's how we address a multitude of issues around having visitors visit our city. Um, the way we market our city is a subset of that, it's a very important subset of that and I think this document will give us direction to be able to undertake the work around a marketing plan that obviously will come back to council um, in due course and, and we're, we're very keen to undertake that work and, and are currently doing work in, in how we market the city as well. So it's not, we're not doing it, um, we just will be reflecting on that more with more focus in coming months. Will that include, um, you know, for example, like I thought what was very good in the, um, I think there were goals that, what was the group uh, that they had, you know, the 10,000 jobs and the, the, those, because those were very clear and measurable. So is the hope that we'll get some very clear, measurable goals? Is that the aim? Some uh, yes, Councillor. Obviously, the economic development wellbeing strategy is being refreshed, and that's where those goals will be reflected. Um, that document is working its way through the council processes as part of that strategic refresh, and and will give overall guidance to both the destination plan and the way we market the city. Um, a question from the chair. Um, Mr Christie, we have on page 18 of our uh, report uh, the Maori Impact Statement. Can you expand on um, the engagement we had with Mana Whenua uh, in this, <coughs> through this plan? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Councillor. We've, we've had extensive engagement with Mana Whenua. We've had two Runaka reps um, that have been part of the steering group. Uh, we've also had um, consultation undertaken um, at the Runaka and and obviously have been engaging with that sector as, as a partner in the development of the, this plan. Um, I'm actually really, really pleased with how engaged they have been in this process and we're very thankful for their input. Um, I must note also that um, that Tereo will be incorporated into this document. It is still going through a process of ensuring that we've got the right terminology. So um, it's embedded in this document, it's embedded in the thinking, and, it's, and it will be embedded in the future work that we do. Councillor Barker. Thank you, Chair. I just have a question around um, page 14 where it says, uh, C notes that implementation of the Autibody Dunedin Destination Management Plan will be reviewed annually. What would be the process for that? Would that be coming to council or is that the steering group that reviews it? I think uh, the steering group would obviously have an input into the review, but it would come to council as, as the governance of this document. Uh, 
Are there any more questions? Okay, I'm happy to move this. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Barker. Uh, in speaking to this um, destination management plan, um, firstly, I want to thank everybody that's been involved, um, having sort of dealt with this for, uh, or been part of this for, since 2020. Uh, it has been a, a long uh, process, but in saying that, we actually have learnt a lot. Um, the amount of data that, and information that was captured through this process, working with the consultants, has really helped shape uh, Dunedin tourism going forward and what that would look like through this management plan and beyond, and also will feed into the economic development strategy. And I think that's been probably the, the most positive aspect was how much information has been captured. I think the key thing is that I want to thank those that were part of the steering group for staying engaged, and I can tell you they were highly engaged, and I appreciate um, them remaining uh, and continuing in that process. There was a diversity of thought, uh, they pushed, they challenged, um, there were a lot of different views at, at different times, but I think we've got a destination plan that actually set out to do what it needed to do. It's not a strategy, it's not a marketing plan, it's a destination plan. And MB describes a destination plan as planning is bringing together different stakeholders to achieve the common goal of developing a well-managed sustainable visitor destination. And I think that's what this does. The steering group will move through. They will be uh, engaged pretty quickly. It's not going to be, a, OK, we've signed this off now, let's put it on the shelf. There's going to be a lot of quick engagement in this because we do need to get the momentum running um, as tourism really starts growing back and we factor on how that works within the community. I also want to thank all the community people that actually participated and there was a lot of different workshops, uh, sessions, uh, even the community boards were involved in it all the way through at different points. There was a, a huge amount of variety of thought and I think that was in key. Uh, again, a uh, strong mana whenua voice which we heard. Um, and I think all in all um, I'm happy with where this has got to and um, I know the steering group will um, really be active in driving the next steps. Speakers, Councillor Raddock. <laughs> Mayor Raddock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr Chair, uh, I'm very happy to support this destination management plan and particularly what I like about it, it's uh, clear, concise, and brief and high level. So there is a lot of other documents and other research that has been incorporated into this, but this gives a high level view with a vision and goals and you know some uh, overarching actions, but it leaves and it actually calls for the way forward to be charted out with uh, interaction uh, with the local community, with the steering group and a review every year. So what this will be is a living document that will be up, you know, uh, updated, it will be agile, it will be fresh on an annual basis and I think that's what uh, it's uh, is a very key facet of this plan. So it can move with the times that we experience because as we've just had three years of very difficult times and you know that no one was expecting and so in every case we need to be agile to be able to adapt to circumstances and I think this plan uh, offers the opportunity and also the opportunity for input from throughout the community to uh, tune it up with you know more specific actions and detailed actions because I think one of the dangers of a plan like this is that you can burrow down into just individual things and capture uh, many but typically not all because there are so many possibilities so this leaves the way forward so I, I think I, uh, well done for the production thereof thank you too. Councillor Walker. Yeah, thank, thanks, Mr. Chair. And yeah, absolutely. A big thanks to all the team. I know this has been a long time in the making. There's been a lot of work gone into this, and I think they should be applauded for it. As I said in my question times, 
Uh, most of this was really exciting for me to read it, and it was really interesting read, which I think speaks volumes about what, you know, the way in which we need to, to market and portray this city. Um, I actually, I, I loved the introduction. It was the first time I was reading something for a long time from this council, and I think it'll, it'll dictate the way we go in the future. It was something that really, the document res really respected Mana Fenua um, in, in, in a sort of integral way rather than just as a as a an afterthought or something we must do leg legislatively so I, I, pl I applaud that and as you said mr chair i mean uh, th this is all about having a well-managed visitor destination but i'd add this is about for us having a well-managed phenomenal visitor destination because that's what this this place is and i don't and I guess that fed into my comments, read the word interesting. I just don't think in any way we should toll poppy this at all. Let's, let's not keep our heads in, in, in the sand and, and raise our heads above the parapet and shout loudly about how brilliant everything in Otapoti Dunedin is because I come from somewhere else and I can assure you it absolutely is. It is all those things I said. It's outstanding, incredible, alluring, beauty, beautiful, compelling. I can I could probably go on for an hour with 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 other positive adjectives. Um, I'm also very keen to see, and again came through in my questions, stitched in this document somewhat is our, our move movement into the the thriving cities donut economics world, which if we want to if we want to be compelling and attract people, and particularly young people from the rest, from around the planet, that's where we need to go because that's what they're going to be seeking. Um, they're going to be sick and tired, actually, of old, boring, environmentally backward um, towns that don't care about their their, um, their 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 environment and and those precious species that share um, the, the the Fenua with with us humans who have who've more often than not treated them badly so that don't don't shy away from doing that that's going to be really important um so don't again be keep, be bold about doing that um and i think i mean i, I was speaking to a fellow councillor gilbert earlier about us um as a city we should we, we should be a city in, for which people um well, fly or or ship in or drive to to see how we got things right so let's not shy away from being leaders in in, in a destination uh, that truly is world leading from a, an environmental and and caring perspective i like to, in the document it talks about regenerative tourism um, and particularly around cruise ships and again let's be bold there we have the destination we allow these people to come here and i think if they come here they need to respect why they come here and again <laughs> whether you like it or not new tourists of the future are going to be asking those questions it ain't good enough just to to let hordes of and i've got nothing against cruise ships i just think there should be a balance somewhere other municipalities and other countries have done well in that space um, and I don't care what the law says. We, 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 they don't have a right to sail, sail into our shores. They don't have a right to sail into Milford Sound and up our harbour. So there needs to be a bit of payback and a bit of balance. Um, and I like the talk in the in the document. And again, don't 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 let's be bolder about this. It's uh, the old world of minimising impact is sort of dead. Um, that's that's old world speak. The new speak is positive, positive impact, and this document does speak to that. For so thanks for including that. I think we should everything we design in, in the destination tourist place should be about having a positive impact. And again, there's good examples around the world of how that's done, and there ain't nothing wrong with copying how others do that and get it right. Um, I, the own, uh, slightly on the negative side, but it's not a negative because I, I generally, generally really like what's in here. Could be a little bit stronger on the heritage stuff. Um, I think everyone's agreeing on that. And the food and drink stuff as well. There's some good eateries in this city. When I came here um, 20 years ago, it's pretty rubbish, actually. No, there's a lot more choices, a lot better. And the better it gets, the better cuisinic experts and top chefs will be coming to this town to set up. Um, so let's just be... The tenure of what I'm saying is let's be bold. Let's just be brave and boast about Otapuri Ota Dunedin. It is absolutely bloody wonderful here. Thank you. Councillor Gary. Thank you, Mr Chair. <clears throat> Thank you for that passionate speech, colleague. Um, 
I want to first start by acknowledging colleagues, uh, staff, contributors, including the steering group and the consultants who worked on this, uh, many, many people. Uh, and it was a long journey, but it means uh, that we have uh, an excellent result. Um, I want to just mention that in 2017, at the very beginning of this, it's uh, mentioned that in 2017, the first destination plan was put together. And that too was a challenging and long process, I can attest to that. Uh, but what I can say is um, we should be really proud that we were first cab off the rank, and that has its own challenges, of course. But it is time for a refresh because um, Mana Whenua wasn't included uh, as much as it is uh, in in this document and, and the time has come. Um, we've had a global pandemic so the landscape has changed and as we've acknowledged the visitors have changed. They want to give back, they have a different perspective on their travelling um, and I think a global pandemic has given a lot of people uh, a view of, gee, I, I've been meaning to do, to do that for a long time, to travel to that place for a long time, now's the time, I don't want to wait any longer. Um, I also make my comments uh, with a background of being a tour guide in most of the main attractions in the city. So I just want to say that for context. I really liked in this document um, the phrase bonus and burden. I thought that was very helpful and, and, and constructive because I think we're aware of the social licence issues, particularly in crews. Um, much of it perception, uh, and uh, but but certainly the numbers of visitors is, is an issue. So social license is in there and I was really pleased to see that acknowledged. Um, I've had some conversations over the last couple of days where people have reiterated to me how important it is and I believe we do this but we mustn't lose sight of the fact we're an education and health city. And just uh, to remind us of that uh, achievement recently that Otago is the highest performing region in New Zealand in 2022 uh, in the secondary school area and that's really quite something. Um, and education is the tipped its hat to education in this document. I want to particularly mention um, international education, uh, wearing my other hat, um, and acknowledge the potential for that, um, not just for the economic contribution that it can make, uh, but regrowing that sector. We did have 5,000 across tertiary and secondary. We now have, uh, we're growing towards 2,000 at the moment uh, and we're on our way up. But it will be a slow reboot of that sector, but there's a lot of potential there. But it also contributes in terms of enriching our city uh, and our cultural understanding, and that has to be a positive. Um, The missing voice in this document for me is the workforce. And what I find interesting is it's a, it's a, a, a vicious cycle because uh, it's the workforce that delivers the customer experience. <coughs> it's the customer experience that people have that determine whether they'll come back, whether they'll stay, with what they'll tell their friends, how, how much money they'll then spend when they're here for the length of time that they're here. Um, and key to that is the people delivering it. And I didn't see the words living wage anywhere in this document, but there were perhaps um, uh, comments that would incorporate that. And I would hope as we deliver this um, that that will be something. And I challenge uh, the steering group to challenge the sector uh, to ensure that people working in this area uh, at least receive the living wage or that there is a plan to do that. And I understand that um, people in the visitor sector have had a particularly hard time. They've been devastated by COVID. But that should be something that we strive for. Um, and just want to mention the authentic experience. Uh, I've had conversations with people recently where they've said who work in the industry and talk about the difference it is now with the fewer numbers of tourists and visitors and how that is enhancing the experience for the visitor because there's fewer people on a tour. So I acknowledge that. Um, I think Councillor Walker has summed it up beautifully and I believe that we should be loud and proud and not 
shine a, a hide our light under a bushel. Um, but I want to tell a little story. Just Cancel, to, Councillor Gary, sorry, time is... Oh, that's unfortunate. I had such a good story to tell. Uh, I'll wrap up. Um, we just need to remember to be loud and proud about the fact that we're one of the world's great small cities. We have unique features. Extraordinary was used in the document, and it is a city that gets under your skin. Uh, and many people treat this as a place that they've always wanted to come to. We might want to make sure that they act on that. Thank you. Councillor Houlihan. Thank you. It's um, a pleasure to follow that. Um, so, and I 100% agree with what Councillor Gary said around the student um, and our significance of our secondary schools and our education sector. Dunedin, in my opinion, is a place where people want to come and live. We have, as it says in here, reasonably easy access to get around. Everything's fairly compact. And our schools are of a, an exceptional standard. And our university is world class. We have, um, you know, as I've said before, um, research professors and research um groups that are are looked on by other countries and envied because we our research is is world leading internationally recognized and mo a lot of that is from Inter Otago University and yes they are having a little bit of a blip at the moment but th you know with success comes growing pains as you go along and and obviously there's the funding issue with the government but that does not change the fact that our city has the first university and I would say <laughs> unbiasedly <laughs> or completely biasedly actually um, the best university in my opinion because I went there and many of us around the table went there and we have a fantastic culture when we talk about what is unique about our city, our environment, our harbour. Yes, that is true. And quite often in the morning I've been taking, running out when I go to get my paper, this is my wee story, everybody will complain, I've gone off topic. But I've started to take my camera with me and I snap some shots from outside the area because it just takes my breath away. The scenery is incredible. And as Councillor Walker says, it is amazing. We we are should screen from the rooftops and be tall poppies because we've certainly can be. We've got so many things to be proud of in our city. And um, but what I would say is, if you look at our university, we are a thinking person city. Wellington is as well, and I would say we are slightly smaller, but very much a thinking person city where there's many academics and there's also a lot of highly educated people here, and we have a lot of things for them to do. We've got a reasonably strong art sector, but we've also got a history of writers that have come, well known writers who have come from Dunedin. We have uh, and arts practitioners. We also have many well-known people who've studied at Otago University, and so they've got their foundations here. They, you know, they've lived here when they studied, and they've got contacts here and a connection with our city. So, and there's a lot of people all over um, New Zealand that will sing the praises of Dunedin Otipoti. So, I, I will, I, and I also want to. I can't finish without thanking Mr. Christie. It has been a long job. And, and you know, to get us to this point now, and it's not yet finished, it's a working document, as he said, but he has put in a lot of work on this. And I also want to acknowledge our chair, Councillor Wiley, who, in my opinion, has been really active with this process. Um, perhaps, uh, well, I don't want to call out the last um, chair of this, but certainly it appears to me he's been extremely active active and um, proactive in helping to engage with the different stakeholder groups. So I just want to pat him on the back for that and hope that we can get a strategy and then on to get a good marketing plan for the city that leads us through to the future. And it makes sense to plan for success. You don't get goals or achieve things if you don't plan for them. And this is what this is doing. It's planning for the success of our city. And I'll congratulate all parties for that. Thank you. Councillor Gilbert. Um, thank you. By way of full disclosure, for those who don't know, my history is entirely based around uh, tourism and hospo, whether it's restaurant kitchens, uh, hotel front desks, uh, bakeries, cafes. It's fair to say I've got something of a keen interest 
in uh, seeing this destination plan come to life. I'm also very well aware that hospital is hard, tourism is hard, finances are constrained by what the market will pay or more particularly what the market thinks it will pay. Um, up until recently I have been engaged solely by way of being part of consultation meetings, whether it's downstairs here or other places. I have a good, if not an in-depth knowledge therefore of the time it has taken to bludgeon this into what we've got in front of us. To get here with something uh, of the road bump bumps on the way is to be applauded. To be where we are now with an approachable plan soon to be in place. Our tourism sector does an amazing job of highlighting, lifting the veil even, of what makes Dunedin so special. Be it, ironically for me, hair-raising walks uh, through the city, uh, motor trike tours of the region, chugging along the harbour, visiting some of our wildlife, or any other uh, number of other things that make our place so special. I too would like to thank everybody involved in making, uh, getting us to this point, and I'd like to uh, highlight Kylie Rufu Karawana for what uh, her, the work that she has done getting us to this point uh, and getting us past some of those road bumps. So a big thank you to all. I cannot, however, escape um, my experiences and the, my thoughts of my experiences when I travel to other cities anywhere in the world. While I love engaging with tourism opportunities and options, that is only part of my experience of any destination. I visit cafes, restaurants, bars, normally more than once, bakeries, uh, everything else. I wander in and out of shops along the main street. I soak up the city by walking the streets, taking in the heritage on display. I simply want to urge that as things get rolled out, that those sectors are included, that hospitality, for example, retail, are gathered into the steering group to make sure that all sectors, as has been mentioned by Mr Christie, that would be uh, gathered around the table. I too agree with Councillor Walker. Let's challenge our natural Kiwi inclinations to play things down. We are beepingly awesome in this city, uh, and we should be immensely proud of that, and we should be singing it from the rooftops. I make no secrets to my belief, again echoing what Councillor Walker said, there is no reason that Dunedin can't lead the way. Uh, 2.4 mentions about um, developing strategic plans to build and enhance major business and leisure events. Well, let's have one of those being a conference with people getting off the plane learning how to do it right. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Barker. Thank you, Chair. As part of the, the steering group, I think I joined last year, um, I'd like to thank everyone involved because it was has been a long, hard process and it's been really hard for the industry, which has been devastated by COVID. So we're really grateful for all of them for, for giving their time and their views when they are seriously constrained and, and suffering a lot of stress. And I'd like to th thank the councillors today for their feedback as well, which I've been busy writing notes and, and it's, it's great to get those and incorporate them. Um, Pre-COVID, the visitor industry was worth seven, over $700 million dollars to Dunedin, we're talking about vast sums here, and around two million visitors, that's five and a half thousand people in our city every day, up to 5% of employment and 5% of um, business numbers. And it's a sector that's in my DNA I, and that I know intimately, having been born into tourism, growing up at Larnet Castle um, and having a wide and, and varied tourism career, including seven years working in the Economic Development Unit as a destination manager, delivering this baby, the... Um, Dunedin Visitor Strategy, which is actually the first destination plan, and this was a, a really excellent plan, and we all worked together to um, to deliver on this plan, and there's a, a, f a few bumps after that, so it's great to see a, a new destination plan coming. And I think what's really special about this plan and that I was excited about was Kōti to Hono, the transformation, the gateway to pathways and partnerships. We're talking about an industry that has been devastated. We do face a huge number of challenges, and to walk through that 
gateway together in partnership is really, really important. And I always used to talk about understanding the strategy because we've had a lot of people talking about marketing Dunedin. And marketing, is, as Mr Christie said, is a subset of that. But the, um, the behind the scenes stuff is making sure that the red carpet's vacuumed, that the signs are there, that we have bus parking, parking, quality experiences, good infrastructure and, and comp a comprehensible signage um, and that people rave about the city. So the destination management was all that, all that behind the scenes stuff, ensuring my, my role goal was ensuring that Dunedin effectively integrates the needs of residents with the needs of visitors and I think this, strategy, this plan goes a long way to do this. And I just want to talk about the DCC's role because we are the governors and also the, the critical stakeholders in GLUE. So we fund the market marketing, visitor information through the eyesight, signage, street cleaning, rubbish bins, car parking, camping spots. We're also the owner of major attractions and facilities, the stadium, the town hall, Dunedin Centre, Toy Two, Chinese Garden, Botanic Garden, Dunedin Railways, 50% owner of the airport, as well as a key funder of the Otago Museum and a major funder of events. So we as council invest tens of millions of dollars into facilities which benefit both visitors and more importantly our community, the lifestyle and the livability and the pride of us as a destination. So so when we're looking at the destination plan, how it feeds into our strategic framework, which we're still working on, and then how it feeds into our destination plan, plus I heard lots of mentions of the of heritage and we will have a heritage action plan and my intention is that some of that is around promoting our heritage as well, which will feed back into the plan. So it's great to see the plan as a, a living document that other that our strategy will oversee, that will, things will, will feed into as well. We're also reviewing our festival and events plan and that's in there is uh, one of the important things. I also note that one of the actions is to look at the, the brand and the identity for the city which leads into a strategic marketing plan and that was a really important thing to have in there. Uh, the important things for the industry were written in here, the clear leadership for the sector, that's why the steering group is so important, and making sure that we have good representation, and it's been great to councillors talking about study and and about food and beverage, etc. We also needed a clear destination plan, cohesive partnership, um, stronger external partnerships and then capability programs to deliver the experience and that was part of my role as well was working with businesses, startups and trying to make sure that we had quality experiences, resilient workforce which also includes um, paying which is really hard when you're in a, in a seasonal industry that's rebuilding itself um, and key was the destination value proposition so we will be expecting to hear more back from the steering group including some plans and some propositions for the long term plans. So think about the budget. Thank you. Any other speakers? Okay, in my right of reply, I think the key in just trying to cover off some of the topics mentioned, um, I think the introduction sort of sums it up quite well uh, in this paper where it talks about what the destination plan and how it's the gateway to the beginning. It's the start of the pathway, and I think that's the important part to remember here. This is the start, and it's going to bring all the collective uh, industry minds, no matter what industry it is that affects into tourism. And I can just imagine, and I'm going to make, highlight this one because if not, I know I'm going to get a message on it. Business events are important to the city. Conferencing is, is really important. There's a um, an important conference going on in the city right now that has brought uh, more than around 245 people, I think it is, to the city, staying seven or eight nights. You know, all these things make up our whole destination plan. I do note, to, and as the people went through what wasn't mentioned, I didn't see one mention of golf tourism. <laughs> Very disappointing, but I can accept that, and I'm sure the steering group will take that on board. But it is the start. The part that really gives me a lot of confidence, and it talked about our world-class tourism operations here in Dunedin, but we've also got world-class tourism leaders. And we're fortunate that some of those people are really engaged in this destination plan. And they'll continue to be, I hope. But are, there are others also in the wings and supporting those operators and supporting those people that will be involved as well. And when I look around our city and I look at our tourism operators and the tourism leaders, 
they would have all been heavily involved and they were continuing to be. And that's what, going back to Councillor Walker's comment about making sure we're a world-class tourism destination, that's what I, gives me great heart in, in having these very key individuals involved leading a lot of this work. I don't want council to be leading this. I want the industry to be leading this. That's why it's a plan. And there is going to be strong leadership in the steering group, and I'm, I'm confident of that. The other thing that's important to note, and we've had it uh, mentioned a few times, is around crews. It's interesting to see globally how crews is adapting to the global challenges and the effects the industry has. And, but we also note how important crews is to Dunedin. And yes, there is a balance, but I think the cruise industry is working in the right direction on that, and I have confidence that you know cruise is going to continually be successful for Dunedin. But again, that's all going to come out through the destination management plan. It's going to come through the strategies. It's going to come through what happens next, and I think that's what we're here to do: is basically walk through the gateway and let the the part of the steering group and the industry uh, basically take the next steps as well. So I'll put it to a vote. Uh, I'll move what's on the screen, obviously. Um, seconded by Councillor Barker, it was. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Perfect. Passed. Thank you. I declare the meeting closed at 11.31. Thank you for your attendance.